He told me he bought a brand new, I think it was a $120,000, $130,000 Bentley. He bought it, new, he says, Matt, I paid it cash. They didn't use credit, I need cash right now. Make me an offer, and here's what he says. Insult me. I said, bro, the best I can do is $60,000. Another enemy here, because you don't have a systems to spend. You don't have anybody holding you accountable on how you spend your cash. Another enemy here is you think too short term. A very easy way for you to resolve all this is having a system here. I call it the 50, 30, 20 rule. Somebody asked me, Matt, how you start making money? We were, uh, I think, in San Antonio a year ago, two years ago. I said, hey, Matt, we're starting making money now. We're making 100 grand a year, 250,000 a year, 500,000 a year. How do we manage our money? And I share with them the simple 50, 30, 20 rule. Of the 20%, it's the easiest part to start with that one. 20%, 10% to your tithe and give. The other 10%, save them for taxes. Okay? The other 30%, you save. You tuck that away. And then the other 50%, you may not like this. That's what you pay your business expenses on, and then that's what you live on. So, as Matt, I'm only making $5,000 a month. $5,000 a month. 20, if, I, if I take that $2,500, is not enough for me to live on and pay my expenses. Okay, well, let's start growing your business. Start increasing your cash flow back to here. It's not your business's fault that you can't afford to pay the bills. You need to increase your enterprise. You need to increase your skills so you sell more. You sell more volume or you sell a higher ticket type uh, product. But the 50, 30, 20 rule has served us and helped us well because it kept us from overspending. It kept us in a high, strong position. I'll give you an example of this. In the 08, 09 Great Recession, in which I believe there's gonna be a, a correction in the marketplace coming up. Why? Just so you know, here's my feelings. I think right now, Biden's gonna be made the hero. Uh, Biden goes into office, they're gonna make him the hero. He's gonna have some form of shift in taxes. I'm not sure, sure how, how drastic, I'm not sure exactly the sp uh, speculation there, but he was looking to double tax from 20 to 40% in terms of capital gains for people making over 400000 and above. But also, what I'm going to speculate here too as well, is that uh, uh, Biden here is also going to pay off a lot of student loans. He's going to create a, st a stimulus plan. It's going to be his marker. I'm going to pay off a lot of student loans, forgive these student loans, and then I'm going to create another stimulus plan. Okay, here's the problem. Back to the national debt. What's going to happen is so much money is going to flood the market. Guess what happens to the value of your dollar? If trillions of dollars are flooding into the marketplace, just like the last stimulus plan just did in, in the pandemic stimulus plan just did in 2020, guess what happens? Trillions of dollars are flooding the marketplace, and your dollar, the more money that's being printed, the value gets less and less and less and less. So with that being said, a lot of people are going to be strapped for cash because they need to have money to pay for other things. They've overspent. They've kept up with the Joneses. This is what happened to me in 08, 09 during the Great Recession. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. Sadly, he was going through a divorce. And he says, Matt, I just bought a, a brand new Bentley GT. Sharp car. Psh, awesome. I was proud of him. I'm glad you had some areas of success. He goes, here's, a, here's the bad news, though. Going through a divorce. And so I need some capital. He told me he bought a, a brand new, I think it was $120,000, $130,000 Bentley. He bought it new. He says, Matt, I paid it cash. They didn't use credit. And um, I need cash right now. Make me an offer, and here's what he says. Insult me. I said, what? Make me an offer. Cut me a check right now, insult me. I said, ah, oh, let me kick it around. So I kicked it around for a couple of days. He goes, Matt, are you gonna make me an offer or what? I said, bro, do you really wanna sell it to me? I said, Matt, I don't, I'm not so sure if I got $120,000 to give you for a car. He says, Matt, just, dude, I just need money right now. I need to capitalize this thing, man. I need to let it go. Okay, are you ready for me to insult you? He goes, hey, bro, throw me your best offer. I have no problem with you insulting me. So, well, we meet, meet me at the uh, Chase at the, uh, at the, at the uh, Dominic's. Back in the day, there used to be a Dominic's and the bank was inside the Dominic's. So I go inside there, I'm at the, I'm at the uh, um, right there next to the bank teller. I said, bro, listen, uh, here's my account. She's ready to cut you a, a certified check. I said, do you have the title? He goes, I got the title. I said, bro, the best I can do is $60,000. Matt, this brand new is 120,000 bucks. I said, bro, you told me to make you an offer and insult you on top of that. This is the best I could do, man. My budget, my limitation, my market is 60,000 bucks. He says, Matt, can you up it a little bit? I said, bro, the best I got now, 65. Come on, Matt. Okay, the last, off, last and final offer, 68, bro. That's all I got. He says, here, man, here's the title. I took his title, had him cut the check, boom. I was, I was uh, looking at this Bentley in my garage, and at that time, I'm a single dad of three kids. What am I gonna do, put my kids in a, in, a, in a car like this? Nothing, they're small at the time. So, 
I put it on Auto Trader, okay? And I put it on Auto Trader. It's a $110,000, $120,000 car. I put it on Auto Trader. I think it was like ninety, ninety-five thousand bucks. In a week, I got an offer. So I flipped my sixty-eight and made ninety. Why? Because I had capital. So this car, I acquired this car. Now I acquired cash. So that's cash back into my bank account. Okay. I'm doing an annual review with the client. The guy says, Matt, I need to put my great aunt into her nursing home. And we need to let go of her townhouse right here in Harlem and uh, North Avenue. He goes, make me an offer. She's making an offer. Okay. I went over there. Place hadn't been updated since like 1970, 1980. Still old uh, furniture in there, uh, old cabinets, finishes, bathroom was, had been updated. He says, man, I, I need to put at least another five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 here to upgrade the bathroom and the kitchen. And the uh, old furnace downstairs, like an old Viking Big furnace, I need to pull a new Viking, uh, uh, a new H HVAC system in there, but this is old stuff. So the best I can do is $80,000. So what? Bro, listen, 8,000, man, let me run it by here. Calls me a few days later, okay, we'll take the offer. So meet me at the title company. Boom, 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 cut him a check. Title transferred over. I get my uh, contractors in there. Gut it out, when can you flip this? 60 days. Ended up being in uh, 45, uh, 45 days. We list it, in, in, a, in a process we list it, this townhouse now with brand new kitchen. Brand new townhouse, has been perfect because it's right there next to uh, Concordia University. Let me make a long story short, we listed it, we sold it for 125. So my 68 became 80, became 125 after the sale of the property. And guess what? Guess what I did with this townhouse? And the cash from it, the proceeds, when all this stuff started to flip, I funded my business. And people wonder, how did you get to where you got? Well, I was patient. And I had cash on hand. I had capital on hand. So when tragedy stuck certain people, I was right there to cut them a check. Now, they may not have gotten favorably what they wanted for it, but without all the red tape and the riffraff, I gave them the cash that they're looking for. They were happy, I was happy. Solved their problem, lightened their load a little bit, became an opportunity for me. So the people that will win in a down economy are those that have cash and capital on hand, not the ones that were keeping up with the Joneses.